I thought that was a really interesting uh, conversation to do with um, pain and is change or transformation always painful? Um, I thought that was really fascinating. Uh, I think there was a point about how we always look at change um, as something that can be quite negative. Um, and so exploring, uh, exploring that, but also from that, how much agency do we feel we have in change, um, which I thought, I thought was really interesting. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to expand on that, who spoke about it. I think carry on for now. Cool. <laughs> we'll put uh, in. Cool. Uh, what else? Uh, I think it kind of ties into this, I might have said it before, but does change happen to you or are you in charge? So that's the agency thing. Um, and then we were looking at metamorphosis and transformation and actually how they are kind of two different things. In, in terms of metamorphosis, when you think about metamorphosis, mm -hmm. that is something that happens to you. That's mm -hmm. something that you, you become something else. And if you look at it in terms of myth, you know, you will turn to stone or you'll turn to a star or, you know, or whatever. Whereas transformation could either happen to you or you can do it yourself. Um, if, if you're talking mm -hmm. about your transformation of yourself mm -hmm. and your life. And so there's something about agency there. Yeah, that is, yeah. yeah. and transformation, um, we've said transformation feels less painful and it's more of a journey, which I thought was a really interesting provocation to think about. Um, what else? And then we started speaking a lot about place, uh, about transformation of place and people having connections to East London. I sound like I'm obsessed with East London because it's all I've spoken about. But, um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, lots of interesting things um, about the social element of um, transformation and metamorphosis as well. Um, and nostalgia. Um, and some other keywords. Chrysalis was a nice one that came out. Rebirth um, and cycles of time. Um, so is transformation linear um, or, or do, does it repeat? Uh, yeah, that's most, most things. Anything else? You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, is there, what would we, what would this group like to share from the, from the things that we were talking about? Do you want to have a look at the notes that Sarah wrote down? Pick out a few things you'd like to share with the rest of the group. Anyone <laughs> Well, we were speaking, uh, there was quite a lot about, um, we started by thinking about gentrification and uh, particularly this area and Brick Lane and migration and how uh, interesting all the sort of different communities that have come along and, and different identities and, how, and whether our identity is fixed. And can your identity change? And a bit like you guys, is that something you take agency of? Or is that something that happens to you? And, um, and how, what a complex issue it obviously is. And speaking about how, whether one person can actually represent a whole identity and what, what, are, the, let's say, what are the problems with doing that. Um, also looking at um, that, that actually we sometimes get quite... Uh, a, get obsessed with thinking well everything's quite terrible and we've got to, transformation and metamorphosis I've got to sit and meditate on how much I hate the fact that the East End is changing for example whereas actually those words are really magical and those things happen in fairy tales and folk tales all the time mm -hmm. as really exciting magic realism things where suddenly I can walk through a wall or I can fly or I so mm -hmm. making sure in a in a piece like this there is space to find wonder again and Lola said it was a beautiful really that this was a really great uh, project to be able to have space mm -hmm. to refine mm -hmm. wonder um, yeah. You couldn't really walk around this area on your own unless you had a dog. No. <laughs> really? Or a very big, angry boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, so, so there is magic in the everyday, and that, there, with the, that we shouldn't be afraid to lose those thoughts when making a piece mm. like this. Mm. Um, anything else? Mm. <laughs> uh, we There was a lot. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about um, archiving? archiving yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you archive something that is changing so rapidly? And who is it who is um, doing the archiving? Who's curating that view? Um, and how is it happening? And what's the platform? And who then gets to see it? Um, this kind of idea. Yeah. Who chooses what is valued? And, and mm. when you, what do you rapidly respond to? Mm. And so we, would, we kind of were thinking about that in terms of permanence and capturing documentation as, as kind of, you know, if things are going to keep changing and metamorph, metamorphosize and transform, you know, what do we hold on to? And what's, especially in kind of the, 
digital age. Mm. Great. Okay. Um, so moving on to other things that you were talking about, do you want to share any thoughts about? Um, yes. Um, yeah. So yeah. So let me move on. Um, the the heading is after the context of society. Um, so I'm hoping these bullet points are slightly more um, legible. So art is activism. Feels as though it's so important, especially in the, the day and age that we're living in. Um, a big impact feels really impossible, so you need to think about it on a micro scale. Um, micro activism, I've written and underlined. Um, we feel that there is an oversaturation of news, um, and so there is this ever needing sense that we need to be more involved with our community, as we feel also that it's kind of ebbing away. Um, so, transformation and bringing people together through space and art. And I've written Art is Hope, and that links back to the thing of art being trans you know, transformative. Um, connect, connecting and collaboration through art and performance, blurring lines of real, real and performance. Um, we then spoke a bit about audiences and how we can feel um, we can have a kind of collaborative transformation you know, journey with our, with our audiences. Um, and how can we find the balance of it being positive but also impactful? Um, because like we were saying, the, these words of you know, change and, and, what are, and oversaturation of news feels pretty um, kind of downbeat and scary, but actually, like you said, how can we feel, how can we find the wonder? Um, and also, we spoke a little bit about how can we make sure that we give opportunity to hear other people's stories? It's not just our voices. Um, and that, in turn, provides space for community, connectivity, transformation, etc. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there anything else that we can add? I want to add? We only just started touching on this. Is there anything that Anna, perhaps we can share? I think. Well, I, th I really think you, that Alicia, came up with your really interesting thing about representation versus. Oh yeah. Representation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm oh. saying is it like a representation or representation? Um, I've been talking for a while about um, if you're thinking about representing um, communities or really representing any kind of like larger body, um, larger body of people, that a that's a very obviously problematic and uh, difficult thing. But is it the way that I would approach it? And I think a lot of people would. Is it you're re in your art, you're presenting lots of different people's voices and viewpoints, and then you're just using your um, your individual, your individual artistic voice, a compositional voice, to present all of these things together. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thanks, everyone. It's really interesting hearing all these conversations. Over to you. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of let you know kind of next steps in terms of what's happening with open call and selection process and kind of all that kind of thing. So um, after today, if you've got any questions, any burning questions, well, if you want to, I mean, the video, if you want to watch the video again, I don't want to watch it again, <laughs> um, then we, we will be putting it online, um, and that's especially for people who won't be able to make this video. We can also uh, uh, write up these if it would be useful for people who weren't taking notes or whatever. Um, but if you have any questions at any point in the application process, then just, just drop me a line and let me know. Um, the application deadline's um, Monday the 20th of January. And then shortlisted applicant interviews will be uh, the week commencing 10th of February. Now before that, if you are shortlisted, you will have an opportunity to make a presentation. Um, a kind of a practice presentation. Uh, as part of the interview process, you'll make an application. Uh, to make, an application. make a presentation. It's like a mock, a mock pitch. But you'll have a mock pitch to be. Yeah. So B won't be on the interview panel, but she will be uh, okay. the the person that you can do the. And then she'll just give you a bit of feedback um, in terms yeah, of your pitch and just kind of what you might want to. So you can just do a change. practice. Yeah. yeah. Or literally just kind of you yeah. know. Um, so if you, you if you are shortlisted, then we will let you know about the opportunity, um, and then we sh we hope to let you know by Valentine's Day, Friday the fourteenth, and then the work in progress showings will be on the twenty fourth of June, and it will be part of Hospital Fields Festival. It will actually be the first night of Hospital Fields Festival, mm -hmm. um, and additionally that it it's it's mainly industry focused. So we will be inviting. You can invite whoever you want, but we'll also be inviting industry kind of producers, festival programmers, um, uh, venues, 
um, all, kind, all kinds of different people. Um, but it will also be open to the public as well. And there will be three, we will choose three these places to work with. Um, so, uh, I just wanted to let, ask if there's any questions about anything from this evening, anything you want clarification with, any questions? Oh. No, two sort of slightly boring logistical ones. No, that's fine. Um, when it comes to rehearsing the piece, um, in June, if are you expecting, and this, I'm sorry if I just haven't literally read the website properly, are you expecting that people take sort of, you know, a week out to, to make it, or is there flexibility, if, if people have other projects as well going on in June, is there a flexibility with when the piece is formed and made, or is it, do you see what I mean, before the yes. showing? Yeah, I mean, basically, if you, if, if you are selected, then you'll work with me Great. as as the producer from Spitalfields side to, to kind of kind of work out a timeline Great. as to when things are and when they will be and then obviously we work closely with Rich Mix because there might be times for rehearsal you know using the space or trying things out or whatever. Okay. So and that's obviously the only thing we need to have set times. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other little the other question I had was whether there is flexibility in um, in terms of a performance space that the piece is made in. Um, is it expected that it will be inside here in the space, or can you pitch a piece that is on the street? Or, or, yeah, last last year, well, you can talk more about that. But last year, there was uh, a work that uh, was was performed, created, produced uh, up at um, Arnold Circus, yeah. which is the bandstand. Oh, the great! Room. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, weather dependent. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously, you work that into your bid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's an issue. And uh, I, I would I would say also, um, I guess because this is a process where we want um, where we want music creators to really kind of push their practice, um, you might want to think about what are the elements of your practice that you really want to be pushing. Um, is it something which is about the technical delivery of something, or does it? Do you want to try and actually do a not finish something. Not finish something. I think it's really important that you think you don't have to finish mm. something. This is a starting point. This is just getting to you to a first point, so you can ask some questions of yourself, ask some questions of your work, and really experiment. And I think, Alicia, how you framed that was really interesting. It was like you had some very clear parameters. You knew where you were going, but yeah, within yeah. that, you knew where you wanted to really test yourself and question yourself. And that that's that felt really good. But so that means. You know, you don't you don't want to put yourself in the position where you've set yourself up such an ambitious show, mm -hmm. and you're like, and I want to get it finished, and it needs to be here, and it needs to be like this. You want to be able to focus on how you can support yourself to really explore and develop and grow. And I think that we're very interested in seeing that in applications and seeing that articulated in applications. You know, how is this going to impact on your practice? How you think? How is this going to give you a chance to think about something a little bit um, in a fresh way, um, as well as being able to see, you know, as uh, Alicia again articulated, a clear idea. A clear idea is, is important that you're able to articulate what your idea is clearly. Can I ask? Um, I know this is called Spitalfields music, but does it have to be music in the sense of? there's melody or instruments. Could it be just spoken word and, or an installation which has lighting and yeah. sound diffusion? I mean, like, spoken word diffusion. As long as there's diffusion. some kind of sound, yeah, as long as it's... As long as there's sound, it qualifies. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a whole range of... I wasn't here last year, but I'm, I'm aware we had a whole range of, of different kind of works. I think there was only one bit of tonal music and mm. mine. <laughs> Probably maybe like four, three minutes. Yeah, but I just meant without instruments necessarily. Okay. Yeah, there was one last year that was a it was a headphone piece mm -hmm. as and well. one yeah. outside that was voice. It was just voice yeah. and a little bit of music, but mainly voice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And there've been other things which have been kind of equally experimental in mm -hmm. other years as well in terms of sound. I think it's a very broad church what we consider to be music okay. so, <laughs> yeah. including in terms of genre as well I know you know we are really thinking about um, representation um, uh, and kind of you know the scheme is focused on supporting artists underrepresented particularly in the classical music industry but that doesn't mean that you have to identify as a classical music composer at all we're very very inclusive in terms of what 
type of musical language you feel you write with and write in. Or not necessarily write at oh, all. Oh, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. I just, I mean, I guess duration, say, ditto, it could be a five minute piece, it could be a half an hour long piece. Yeah. I I, I'd say probably no more than half an hour. <laughs> yeah, and I think. Just because of the parameters that we're mm -hmm. working in. Yes, yeah, so I think, yeah, the parameters are more about maximum rather mm -hmm. than. Rather than minimum, I think mm -hmm. um, we, in something we might need to talk about a little bit further because mm -hmm. also, you know, we, there needs to be room, I think, around the sharings for dialogue mm -hmm. with audiences. So we'll build in time for there to be feedback mm -hmm. and a conversation with the audience who are there, which means a bit shorter will give you more time to then to focus on what that material is and also then to have a conversation yeah. about it afterwards. And talking about audiences, I mean, um, Last year, did you get a very diverse range of people visiting? Um, do they come here as sort of part of their tour around the festival, or how 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 was the audience? Was it was it? It wasn't part of the festival this year, so it was oh, a okay. it was a kind of a, a one off standalone. a standalone show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the opportunity about it being part of the festival and also us partnering with Rich Mix, which is brilliant for us, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. there's all sorts of audiences that are likely to access it. So you'll have some of our more trad. You know, mm -hmm. Spitalfields music -y audiences will have audiences accessing it through Rich Mix. Obviously, all of the the, the music creators and their people, and obviously, we'll do kind of a big industry call out as well. Um, so, as well as a big invite list, there will be some open access tickets as well. It's sort of the opposite of the do you kind of. Oh, sorry, I'm very bad. Um, <laughs> the opposite of. Does it have to be music? Is it, could it just be music? Yeah. If you said I want to write like a string yeah. quartet. Yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. fine. As, you know, as, as long as you can show how it, really dull. how it stretches you as an artist and, and kind of how you interpret the, the theme. Um, I mean, if you, can, if you can show that and show how, how, how you're using the theme and how you stretch yourself as an artist and how it gives you the impetus to do something new that you might not have done before. Quartet is definitely not done. <laughs> 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 no, well, I'm just thinking everything seems to be, you know, installation, and I'm like totally down for that. But like, could you go the other way? Oh yeah, you can totally go the other way. But then, how how would you pitch that? If you want? I think the reason we're asking people to articulate how it's stretching them as an artist is because that's why we do this scheme so it's yeah. just it, it and obviously that's always a really hard thing isn't it presumably that's a really hard thing for you to talk about yourself as an artist and talk about that but um it's a very useful thing to do for funding applications yeah. i think as an artist so yeah. give it a crack yeah, if you can yeah. <laughs> is that true yeah, yeah. Mm. sometimes if i don't know i get someone that i work with to just write something for me and i'm like oh i wouldn't have considered myself like that and i'm like mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's very hard trying to talk about yourself yeah. I'm more trying to think how would you pitch something that doesn't exist if you can't say what it might be. But you can, give, you know you can give examples of your, in the application you give examples yeah. of your previous work exactly. and then you can talk about how this will be different or how it might stretch you or how yeah. you mm -hmm. may develop a certain thing or whatever. So we can chat about it if you want as well. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are so many ways that you could stretch, that you could try new experimental ways of, of working that would then end up as a string quartet. If that's, if, I know that, yeah, I mean, that's, sure. that's a total sort of like of an idea, but yeah, like yeah. process. The process is the interesting. Yeah. Is, yeah, is it, really it, interesting. Unless it's all about the process. It's a work in progress at the end of it, yeah, whether or not true. it's a fully formed thing or not. Yeah. I think last year it, they all were mainly kind of performances in themselves. Is that right? I mean, they'd all got to a certain, certain stage, point, yeah, yeah. But I think they haven't always. I mean. Before we did a before we started our formal open call process, there was definitely one which was just somebody talking about their idea. I mean, I think we're quite keen with the resources that we now have currently for this year to help people to move their work on further than that. But um, mm -hmm. you know, it's R and D really, so mm -hmm. you need to use that R and D time in a way which is really useful to you. Mm -hmm. It's also the opportunity to dream a bit, though, isn't it? Mm. So I, I mean, I, I'm not on the interview panel, so I'm saying this to just as yeah. the chief exec of the organisation, but I'd really love to see applications that are perhaps pushing somebody because they've 
they've used this as, as, a, as a way to sort of embolden an idea a little bit or take a risk that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do because there's a support network around it. And if it goes tits up, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. Yeah. You know, you think about music history of all genres, there's loads yeah. of stuff that hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. But you always learn so. You learn more from the mistakes in life mm -hmm. than you do from the things that go well. Yeah. They hurt more, mm -hmm. but you do learn more from it. So it, it would not be from my point of view, and I think from the organisation's point of view, and certainly from the funder's point of view, it would not be a bad outcome for somebody going into this to get to the end of it and go, well, actually, that was a load of crap. And I'm never <laughs> going to do that again. <laughs> and I've decided... Yeah, yeah. yeah because you've you had the time and the money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I feel like sometimes That's fine. That, That's good. Yeah. that seems like the if you come from classical training, sometimes it feels like that's the complete opposite mm -hmm. of yeah. what you're sort of taught. Like, I trained as a violinist, and I wasn't very good, but um, it's... You're kind of like, if you do this thing wrong, then you're out, and then your grade goes down, and then you're mm -hmm. like... And it's like... Yeah, but there's always offshoots. Of, you know, you might go down a road and all think, oh well, that's not but you'll have considered it. You know, and that's mm -hmm. part. So when you do next project, that you know, that's part of the whole journey mm -hmm. of you as a. Mm -hmm. I also think this is a massive stereotype, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think women are very, very good at self-limiting beliefs. <laughs> it's a real skill that a lot of us have, and maybe this is an opportunity to you know, push yes. yourself in a direction that, that you might not otherwise. Yeah. Mm. And men can do it as well. The same you know. thing, yeah. but um, apparently there's a statistic that women need to be like 125% clear on what it is they're trying to do before they'll attempt it. And men, it's like 75%. <laughs> so we do have a tendency to kind of self -limit. It's the same with applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. men, if men only have half of the essential, they're like... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Women, women will have 99%. And all of the disciples, and they're like, oh, I'm not sure. I've <laughs> yeah. um, got a question about um, not knowing who the other people are <laughs> that I want to collaborate with. So I'm not sure who to suggest as a mentor, and I'm not sure who one of the team might be because I don't know the right person yet. So does that matter? No, Can I don't I... think so. Um, in terms of the mentor, we'll work. If, if you are selected, we work with you to put that mentor in, yeah. in place. Mm -hmm. um, because I guess through the application, for, if you if you were shortlisted, and then through the application process, and then through doing the pitch, things may change anyway, or things mm. may fall into place, or whatever. I think if you can have an idea of, for the mentor, for instance, the idea of the area you might want them mm. to work in, or something that you're interested in mm. developing. I mean, in terms of the artistic mentor, it it, it, it it's something for you personally to have developed yourself. Um, you know, linked. To the performance, the creation of this, but it's actually mm. what do you need right now that would really help. Mm. So kind of think about it like that. In terms of collaborators, we could have an idea of, like, say, a photographer, but you just, you know, yeah. you can kind of, kind of say, I want to work with someone yeah. like, mm. blah blah blah. Yeah. But if you are able to, as Alicia said, you did contact a couple of your collaborators beforehand just to say, I have this idea, would you be interested in it? Yes, because I thought it would be, especially because they were so heavily involved, it would be a bit crap if I was like, I got this thing! And they were like, well, we can't do it. <laughs> so I just kind of had to be like, would you potentially be free at this time? But it depends. Mm -hmm. but it was just because they were, they had to do so much <laughs> as well, and like very specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can fact you can factor that into your timeline as well. Yeah. Yeah. Being like, I mean, it's four, four months. Four months mm. is not. It can be quite a long time, but actually, it can also be quite a short time mm. as well. So, um, have, really have a think about that as well, and how you would use that time. And, well, um, well the, I suppose the other thing would be, in a perfect world, if I could have this kind of a person as part of the project, but this is a work in progress, and so for the time being, it's I've got these people in place. Um, but ideally, yeah. I would love to be able to work with this kind of person Personally, as well. Yeah. But maybe there isn't time to do it this time, but mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, I think, it, as I say, it's a work in progress. And if you, if you work on it and then go, actually, I'd really like to further develop it afterwards with also this person. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's surprising how easy 
or relatively easy it is to find people that want to work with you if you have funding. And yeah. Like, so, <laughs> 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 so a friend did this scheme a few years ago, and she, she, her she's the sent out sort of open workshop audition call yes. after she was selected and, yes. and then um, saw lots of people through that and yeah. so that was yeah. Um, I just had a thought about the application and then the um, the you know if you're successful to get shortlisted to interview is um, I think we're doing this again at what we did last year where in the application it kind of really focuses on the idea and you and who you are and what you think you, what you think you want to get out of this and, and how you might benefit. And then, um, but for those people that we are able to take to interview, um, we will ask you to bring uh, a, a bit of an idea about how, how you might use that production budget. So a bit of a budget and a timeline as well. So, so that's the two stage. And, and we'll ask you to present your idea, which is why there'll be a chance to do like a, a practice run. Yeah. But yeah, it's always, sorry. It's a, a bit like doing a, like a two-stage funding application where they don't ask you for the budget until the second stage and you have to get through the first stage, but you really need, there's no point applying for something unless you have a budget, some kind of rough budget in mind, yeah. To mm -hmm. But all of those, and those elements, we will work with a music curator to refine those, but it's just kind of having gone through that thinking process.